In this video I'm going to make a housing for a probing button which I'll then attach to my new CNC machine and its control box. This is a test piece that I 3D printed, it took a while to do and I've already made some changes in that. I'm going to use a pilot light which I'll also wire to the switch which will illuminate when the buttons press. I think that would just be a nice feature. This took a fair while to print, maybe over an hour if I remember correctly and the milling of this material will probably only take about 20 minutes, so much quicker. Uh, the first thing I need to do is just secure this down, so I'm going to drill a couple of holes and screw it to the wasteboard. I'm going to now area clear the main chunk of this component, as well as the opening for the button. I've got an 8mm up cut bit in there already, which I'm going to move to the probe location on this CNC machine so I can work out the length of the bit and uh, then I'm going to change over to a spot bit to mark up where I'm going to drill the smaller holes and then back to the 8mm bit to cut out the final shape. I've got a separate video about the whole procedure on this probe and how it works and what uh, macros I've set up on BCNC so I'm not going to repeat myself here but what I will do is link to that uh, in the uh, information card. Several things went wrong there, including forgetting to press the macro to zero the z-axis to the wasteboard, which resulted in the crash, and if you were to re-examine the crash footage again carefully, you may notice that some spot markings did not land where I was expecting them to. I should have also noticed when I performed the second probe cycle that it didn't exactly land in the centre of the button. I'll replay the two probing sequences at the same time so you can see for yourselves. The tip of the V-bit doesn't look centred on the button. This could have happened for a few different reasons such as not completing a homing cycle properly or missing steps due to travelling too fast or a loose motor coupler. I think I may have run the previous job with a tool selected that had a much higher feed rate than I had previously used and that my max rate setting for $1.110 and $1.111 was set too high to limit this. I decided to drop those down from 1500 to 900 millimeters a minute and then did the tool file, flip the board around and cut this one. So Valchromat is very similar to Kemi wood which is a modeling material and you can take these particular type of shapes and thin edges quite well. If you tried to make something like this out of MDF, it would most likely have broken apart before it even got off the wasteboard. I'm now drilling and countersinking the spot markings on the piece, which will accept the mounting machine screws and pilot light. Okay, this is the button. The button I'm using is a 30mm flat momentary button with a normally open and normally closed set of terminals. It's sold as vandal resistant, which is convenient because CNC machines have a tendency to break into themselves. I got the button from Iris Components for about 20 quid plus fat, while the light was a lot cheaper and from eBay. That's a 24 volt 6mm white pilot light but it's unbelievably bright. I wanted a red light, but that one was out of stock, and I bought this one instead, which I now regret. I may try pour some red enamel paint over the top to reduce the brightness. And the locking nut is wider than this section here, so you don't have to assemble it in any particular order. This just simply clips into place like that, and then fits 
like there and this ties in and the light will go through that hole there I managed to damage that a little bit, I've got to give it a sand I'm going to wire up the touch probe now uh, the light's going to be wired to the normally open terminal so that when it's pressed it closes and turns on and then the normally closed will go in the center and that will go back to the signal and if you use this setup you'll have to make sure to remember to use the G38.4 or 0.5 commands and not the others now I've wired the red 24 volt power cable to terminal number one and the black ground to terminal number two this will turn the pilot light on the other two terminals will be for the probe mechanism as I mentioned earlier, the pilot light connects to the normally open terminals on the probe button and the signal for the probe goes to the normally closed. So this is the end that's going to go onto the aviation panel mount. So what I'm going to make sure I do is wrap this drain wire for EMI interference onto the outer casing of the uh, socket. I'm going to wrap the drain wire in a figure of eight around the cable clamp screws. This will connect the shielding to the wiring inside the enclosure which I can later terminate at a star earthing block. This will help protect against EMI interference. I'm now wiring the probe button and pilot light to the cable. I decided to do this before fitting the part so I could test it out. But later I have to make sure that I drill an opening slot large enough to pass the panel socket through as well as provide enough clearance for the wiring soldered to the terminals as they extend further than the Valcromat piece. I'll also need to make sure I cable tie the wires somewhere onto the machine so that acts like a strain relief and prevents the soldered section or the clipped in place terminals becoming damaged because of movement. I then wired the panel mount to the cabling that will go to the inside of the control box. As long as you keep good records of what colour wires go to which terminals, you shouldn't make any mistakes. And at the end you can double check your connections with a voltmeter before turning on the juice. Sometimes I get so engrossed when using heat shrink I forget I'm filming myself. Okay, I've just wired it in and god that is really bright it's a bit too bright ok I'm just going to press the probe button and make sure that this actually does what I would like it to do This bit here is one of the widest bits I have of a quarter inch or six mil uh, shank and I normally use it for surfacing the wasteboard. Um, I'm going to place this on just hand tight. I'm not actually going to cut anything but I'm trying to work out where I'm trying to work out where to place the probe button and I have the choice of either at the front or the back of the machine. Initially I thought about placing the probe button at the front but realised I would have a couple problems. Because I need to drill or router a hole for the cable to pass through, a piece of aluminium at the front of the machine would obstruct that. I'd have to set the button further back which would mean the wasteboard and overall cutting size would be smaller. However, there would be the advantage that the button would be more visible and if I were to put the machine in an enclosure, I could use the probe location as the same place to change tools and that I wouldn't have to lean into the machine to do so. If it's at the rear, I'd get a deeper wasteboard and moving from the home position to the probe location would be quicker, but I lose visibility. I rehome the machine and then move the spindle with a V-bit in the collet roughly to a location I'd like the probe button to be. I then made a mark on the wasteboard 
and shuffled the gantry forward so I could access and draw the opening. In theory I could use the spindle but I haven't wired it up yet and this will just be a bit easier. I'm going to put a bit of wood underneath though, so I don't. I drilled two holes by hand with a wooden block underneath to prevent the melamine surface from breaking out and then cut out the space between them with a jigsaw. The plug I'd wired to the other end of the pro button cable was too wide so I drilled a new hole with a diameter just wider. I used a piece of wood with a hole the same size as the force a bit to guide the drilling. I then marked through the openings of the Valkomat piece using a parallel punch and drilled the holes with which to secure the probe button down to the sub wasteboard. I fixed the piece down with socket screws but later I'll replace those with countersunk ones which are still commuting to me in the post. As I said earlier, I have a more in-depth video about the methods involved in probing, so I'll link to that in the information card if you are curious. But the process is very simple. I home the machine to find the machine coordinates, and then move the spindle so it is centered over the probe button. I can then begin to update my macros, so after homing, I move to the new probe location, which is a G53 command, and there I perform a G38.4 probing cycle. Once the probe has been triggered, I then set the tool N to zero on the wasteboard with a known X and Y position, which I do with a G10 command. But I can't do this now because I don't have a wasteboard. I'll provide a copy of the Pro button mount to my patron, so don't forget to support this channel there for those little perks. And for the rest of you hanger runners, you'll see me in the next video where I'll be installing some laser engraving and under where I'll be installing some laser engraving electronics and under gantry warning lights.